Welcome to the Stay Healthy El Paso podcast, where we help El Pasoans get away from taking pain medications, avoid getting injections, avoid surgery, and keeping up an active lifestyle. This podcast is presented to you by Dr. David Midoff, expert physical therapist and owner of El Paso Manual Physical Therapy. It is our goal and intentions to provide you with valuable tips and insights from experts in the El Paso area so you too can stay healthy, fit, and energized. Now here is your host, Dr. David. Hey everyone, my name is Dr. David Midoff. Welcome to the Stay Healthy El Paso podcast. And I've got a good friend of mine here, Tony Stafford. Tony Stafford is a client of ours. He came in for a little issue that people in their 20s and 30s tend to deal with. And it's a relatively quick problem to solve. And, and he's doing fantastic at this point. He's nearly at the end of his uh, of his care with us. But the reason I want to bring him in is because he is not in his 20s or 30s. He's actually in his mid-80s. 84. 84 to be precise. He'll tell you more about himself in just a second here, but um, I wanted to bring him on because he's got some awesome advice on how to keep healthy into your 80s. So welcome on to the show, Tony. Thank you, David. So tell us a bit about yourself, Tony. Where, where are you from? I'm from North Carolina originally, a little town outside of Charlotte called Belmont. And uh-huh. I went to Wake Forest University and graduated in 1957. Mm-hmm. Um, after I graduated from Wake Forest, I was drafted into the Army and spent my first year in Fort Meade, Maryland. And then I was shipped to Fort Bliss. And that's how I ended up in El Paso. When I got here, I discovered that there was a little college here by the name of Texas Western College. Mm-hmm. So I checked it out and started taking some night classes at Texas Western College yeah. and uh, met a girl, of course. And when, so when I got out of the Army, I stayed in El Paso to finish my master's at Texas Western. And after I got my master's from Texas Western, then I went to LSU for my doctorate. And I was not coming back to El Paso, but Texas Western called me and said, hey, we'd love to have you as a doctoral uh, candidate. And so I told my wife, I said, well, we'll go back there for about a year or two till I finish my dissertation, then we'll be out of there. Mm -hmm. 55 years later, (laughs) I'm still here because I love El Paso. I'm here by choice. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. So um, you said there that uh, you you went through all this education. You ended up going moving away from El Paso for a while to go to LSU to do your doctorate. Right. Um, and w- would you mind sharing what what your doctorate is in? What your what yeah. you studied? Uh, yeah. My specialty is English and American literature. Fantastic. And my dissertation was on Shakespeare. Cool. And so. At at University of Texas, El Paso now, I'm in the English department, and I teach a variety of... My specialty is dramatic literature, in addition to Shakespeare, uh, British playwrights, American playwrights, uh, but I can teach it all. (laughs) That's awesome. It sounds like you'd be a fun professor to to have as a student. I love teaching. (laughs) I put a lot of energy into it. I can imagine. Which keeps you young. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And you can tell with your your personality and disposition. Well, let's get into some of the health tips that I think that you've got okay. stored in you that, that right. our, our listeners need to hear. So first off, you know, just getting motivated is a big deal. So for you, what are two or three motivating factors for you to stay healthy? Well, that's pretty easy. Uh, I hate being sick <laughs> and I love feeling healthy. So to me, that's a powerful motivating factor. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't like being overweight. So I like to watch my diet and work out and, and a little bit of vanity. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to get fat and ugly <laughs> if I don't have to yet. But yeah, I, but staying healthy is what's important to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I know it's something you have to work at. It doesn't come free. Uh, the law of the universe is use it or lose it. That's so true. Yeah. That's so true. Yeah. And I love that. That's that's fantastic that that, yeah. that motivates you. I know for me specifically, I don't want to have to get bigger clothes. I don't want to have to go get a, <laughs> You got it. You, uh, got you know, it. up the size on my pants or my shirts or anything like that. That's called so, vanity also. Yep, it's a bit of vanity for sure. <laughs> but um, it's also about health. Oh yeah, you just feel tremendously health is better. First. Yes. When uh, I, I so I a little bit of of a my health story. I won't take much time at all, but I used to be very obese when I was a kid. And I kind of grew up like that. But once I lost a lot of weight, 
I was stunned at how good I felt. And I never knew that I could feel like that because I was so used to feeling the way that I felt when I was really overweight. When you're overweight, you just feel lethargic Mm -hmm. and low energy. And that's not a good feeling. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So what have you tried and found that has not worked for you to keep healthy? Um, That's a hard question to answer because everything I've tried so far seems to be working pretty (laughs) good. Um, I tried bicycling, but then I discovered the streets of El Paso are rather dangerous. (laughs) (laughs) I've had several friends who were killed on bicycles, including Beto O'Rourke's father, who was killed on a bicycle. I tried swimming. Swimming wasn't for me. Mm -hmm. But I played football in high school and junior college. And you have to run a lot to to stay in shape. And I found out that I really enjoyed running just for the sake of it. Mm -hmm. But bicycling didn't work. Swimming didn't work. Mm -hmm. And eating steaks (laughs) and hamburgers didn't work. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I had to eliminate those things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So does that mean that you're you're not eating meat right now? Are you eating chicken or fish or uh, how's your what's your diet looking like? Um, how's that contributing to your healthy vegetarian life? all the way? Mm-hmm. Uh, I started off on this kick about mm, three and a half years ago, mm-hmm. and I was going to try to be a vegan. Uh, that's very very strict, and you can't have cheese, which I love, and eggs, which I have one egg a week. Um, but so I, I, I slipped back to the classification of vegetarian, but no poultry, no ham. And I love pork chops, <laughs> but, yeah, but you know, when you get into a, a vegetarian diet and you learn all, you learn all kinds of delicious dishes, you discover mm. after a while, you don't really miss meat. Mm. I don't miss it at all. Uh, not even tempted. Wow. So. A few bacon crumbles on my salad, maybe, <laughs> when I go out to eat. But that's about it. Wow. Yeah. That's fantastic. That's yeah. fantastic. You know, for me, I, I was uh, pretty heavy on meat, uh, especially back when the paleo diet was a big kick. And yeah. and I know a lot of people are on the keto diet. And, and um, you know, and, and not if, if you're listening right now and, and you're very carnivorous or you're following one of these, uh, you know, paleo, keto, keto, or there's a bunch of other um, diets out there. Um, I think what what Tony has developed, I've had other conversations with him about health and, and for myself too, is you kind of have to figure out what works best for you right. Right. and your genetics and your health. Um, right. And maybe a meat is maybe meat is a part of that. Maybe it's not. Uh, or maybe some hybrid. I would hybrid. say if you're going to eat meat, uh, you should have small pieces mm-hmm. sparingly. And of course, Poultry is not poultry is not as fattening or doesn't contain as much fat as beef and pork does. Mm-hmm. So that might be an alternative for some people. Yep. I know my son's a big uh, health nut also, and they eat mostly turkey, mm-hmm. which is pretty close to almost no fat. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Right. It's pretty lean, especially the breast. Right. Part. Right. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, fantastic. So you would just to sum it up there, you found that exercise. Uh, exercise wise cycling was not your thing because of safety yeah. swimming you didn't really take to even though I was a lifeguard when I was in college <laughs> uh, I was a sinker and <laughs> swimming is very difficult so I gave up swimming oh. and I found my niche with running yeah, yeah. Well, we'll talk more about that okay. right now in the next question okay now, the other things that didn't work out for you too well was was eating uh, meat especially what you said pork and and beef meat Right. Yeah. Good. I'm glad that you found that out. And, yeah. and, uh, Me too. you know, for those of you listening, I'm looking at Tony, I'm describing him. He's probably going to blush right now, but <laughs> he, like he said, he's 84. He does not look like a year past 54. Wow. He looks fantastic. <laughs> I mean, if you look at his skin, he's, he's got excellent color. Um, if you, I've worked on him hands on wise and he just feels sturdy and strong, not frail at all. You know, somebody in their eighties, it's, it's not uncommon to, to see them as somebody that if you, you know, if you shove them or nudge them accidentally, like they might fall over, Tony looks like he'll shove you and nudge you and knock <laughs> you over. And, uh, like, he, uh, you know, he's, he's a tough, sturdy guy. Uh, um, I, he is in fantastic health. So it's, it really is evident. And that's why I wanted to bring him on the podcast One today. One of the essentials in life is a good blood flow. Mm-hmm. 
for your skin, for your muscles, for your heart, for your lungs, for everything is good blood flow. There's mm -hmm. lots of oxygen. Yeah. And I think that keeps you young. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And um, and mind-wise, something that I think maybe you're picking up is, is Tony's a sharp guy, and he, he's in the reading and keeping up to date with, with things. He's Every day. He's, yeah, he's a, he's feeding his brain, exercising his brain quite a bit as well. And, and, and crossword separate. puzzles. And <laughs> <laughs> I exercise my brain. Mm -hmm. It's the law of the universe. Use it or lose it. Yep. 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 Fantastic. <clears throat> So let's go on to the next question here, Tony. What are three or more things, if you've got more, um, that you attribute to your current successful health? Well, it may be a little repetitive, but mm -hmm. I run every day. Uh, I'm in a phase-out program right now, so I'm not teaching this semester. So I, I have that luxury of being able to run every day. I may take one day off a week, but mm -hmm. running is one of the secrets for me. And I run pretty long distances, anywhere from 30 to 50 minutes every time I go out. And and I try to keep a pretty good pace. Um, so I think running is absolutely, in my life, for me, is mm -hmm. essential. And and I love running. And I'm, when I'm running, I'm breathing deeply, I'm looking at the blue skies, and, and just enjoying the exercise and feeling my body in good health. And uh, it's, it's that in itself is very stimulating. Mm -hmm. So the running is one thing. Mm -hmm. The other course is the vegetarian diet. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, that works very well. And I don't want to get into a medical history, but every time I have a checkup, I, mm -hmm. I blow my uh, doctor's socks off <laughs> because he can't believe my cholesterol and my, my heartbeat and, and all my vitals, uh, the condition they're in. Yeah. Again, vigorous exercise and then a healthy diet. Yep. The other thing is attitude. A lot of people get 60 or so, and they go around talking about how old they are, mm -hmm. and, and they make themselves old. I do not see myself as old. Yep. I see myself as young. Maybe that's kind of stupid on my part, but <laughs> but I think attitude, the brain has so much effect on the body. I mean, we know the relationship between brain and body, mm -hmm. and having the right attitude and a youthful attitude, and enjoying things in life, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I am a scholar, but I'm not off in the library carol all day long <laughs> doing research. I, I have a good balance in my life. I mean, I go to football games and basketball games and uh, dining with my lady friend and, uh, mm -hmm. and, and just staying involved in life and enjoying good things, and enjoying good movies, enjoying good plays, enjoying good concerts. Uh, those, those things... Attitude is the third thing that I would mention here. Running, diet, and attitude would be mm -hmm. my summation for that. That's super good. That's that's spot on. And, you yeah. know, just just to highlight each point that you're yeah. saying there. Yeah. Um, with don't the, forget, I'm a professor. <laughs> <laughs> with the um, with the running specifically, I, I I love that you found that out for yourself and and for me as a as an expert physical therapist, and I I'll never forget one conversation I had with. A woman, it's been years now, who came in, she was in her 50s, very pear-shaped. In other words, she had a small waist, right. big hips, and she right. was short. And she told me, it's it's been on my bucket list to run a half marathon. <laughs> Yet she was seeing me because her knee and her hip were killing her from mm -hmm. running just a couple miles. And she right. was talking about she was having to ice her knee. Right. And um, I, I had been working with her for a little while already. And I had been pushing her to do strength training. Now, she did phenomenal with the strength training. Nothing hurt her. She was actually good at it, and she enjoyed it. So I had this conversation with her. I said, look, you're genetically built to lift weights. Like that, That's what your body's built to be good at. Mm -hmm. Running a half marathon, you're, you're just not cut out for it. And I think there's something to that. That's why you see Kenyans and Ethiopians win the Boston Marathon. Yeah. There, there's a certain body type that's built to They're do very small. activities. Uh, UTEP yeah. has a number of Kenyans. Mm -hmm. And I see them around campus, and they're tiny guys. They yeah. probably weigh one thirty-five or forty, mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah, yeah they're lightweight, and, and you know, looking at your build, I could see why you would tolerate running as much as you do. Because I'm sure there's listeners out there saying, "Oh my gosh, every time I run, my knees kill me, or my mm -hmm. my feet kill me, or yeah. something hurts." And and um, so I would consider that. You know, what have you done exercise-wise that you've enjoyed that hasn't been harmful to you? 
and what have you done that has hurt and, and don't dismiss it as I'm not just, I'm just not an exercise person. It's not for me. There's gotta be something out something there. Do. Yeah. Something that you enjoy or that, that's helpful. Or an elliptical or a bicycle or mm-hmm. a stationary bike or something like that. Something that's less impactful. But one of the questions I always get asked, David, is, well, don't your joints hurt from running so much? Yeah. Of course, I don't do marathons. Yeah. Uh, that's beyond my scope. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I do run every day, those distances I mentioned. Yeah. But people always ask me, well, don't your joints hurt? I've, I've never had any joint problem. And the thing is, and I think everybody should hear this, first you want to buy very good shoes yep. and make sure they're plenty cushioned. And then I buy a couple of extra inserts in my soles mm-hmm. so that my shoe has lots of padding in it. Mm-hmm. Because th- there is some pounding that takes yeah. place with, you know, uh, with jogging and running. Uh, but I think if you if you have that cushion there, I think it really eliminates the, the uh, trauma to your joints yep. that way. So I would say make sure you have some good shoes and put extra Dr. Scholl's, this is an ad, uh, Dr. <laughs> Scholl's inserts in for extra extra padding. Yeah. That's what I do, yeah. I agree 100%. I yeah. think investing in yeah. your footwear is a, a big deal. Yeah. I've, I've been running myself in the past, and I've noticed a difference when I – you know, get the, the Payless level running shoes versus the, uh, you know, the right. professional running store running shoes or, Basic you know, the, or the top brands. Yeah. Um, you, you definitely pay for what you get when it comes right. to, to yeah. running right. shoes. Right. The Absolutely. other point that you brought up on the three things that, that attribute to your health um, was nutrition, your, your diet. And, um, you know, Absolutely. I love how when I've heard you talk about your diet, it's it's very disciplined. and, and But you don't seem stressed out about it. You don't no. seem worried about it. I see some people that you know bring up how they wish they could have this food or that food that they can't have because they're on their diet um but the resolve that i see in you is incredible to me that this is just the way that i eat i enjoy it you you've chosen to this eat this may way. be hard for a lot of people they love food mm-hmm. which is very easily easy to understand and some people can't do without food and they can't get enough of it and that becomes a problem yep. uh i've tried to minimize the importance of food I, I love vegetables, and I, ha- I have fruits and nuts and vegetables and pastas and, and all kinds of wonderful things with lots of good sauces and everything else. And, mm-hmm. But I don't make food that—I'm not living from meal to meal. Yeah. Uh, some people are, and uh, some, for some people it's a recreation, yeah. you know, and, uh, or a pastime, or a way to feed their unhappiness. Mm-hmm. But so you, you don't need to make food so important. Yes, it's vital. <laughs> to be able to have the nourishment to live on, but you mustn't uh, get it out of perspective as to just how the role it plays in your life. Right. And I have friends for whom food is extremely important. Mm-hmm. They spend all their time reading cookbooks and trimming up all these fantastic dishes and everything. <laughs> I, yeah, I can't quite go there. I'd yep. rather be reading a good book. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I think that that's connected to the third point, which is your attitude. Your, your mindset towards right. your, your your health and nutrition. Right. And, uh, like I can tell you my, my background, I, I grew up with food being probably the most important thing when it comes to a get together or, or even the day. You know, everybody's my culture was the to, same way. Uh, I was a Southern boy and mm-hmm. food is really important to Southerners. <laughs> <laughs> Fried chicken and all those things, you know. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> and um, I, I've, I've had a I've had to take. I've taken the angle of I just need sustenance. I need this to be good, yeah. and and it needs to give me the energy that I need and make me feel good. I don't want to fall asleep because I had, yeah. you know. I a, think when you eat a little bit, you enjoy it more. Yeah, it reaches the point when you're eating, you're already full, and you just keep on eating, and it really gets <laughs> to be painful. Yeah, and kind of nauseating. Yes, if you're not careful. Yeah. <clears throat> so I love that. Those are those are excellent health tips, and and I think really foundational for everybody. It's, it's awesome that you're doing that. Mm. Let's move on to the next question here. So what health advice do you have for listeners that are in their 30s, 40s, and 50s? The people that might be working right now, they might have a family to care for at home because you were there at one point. You know, not, it, it looks like you were just there <laughs> health-wise, yeah. I mean age-wise, but, um, um, you know, they're they're busy. They're, they're dealing with... Di- day-to-day constant things or they're spending their time working all day and so finding time to exercise and cook and do all that stuff is is stressful what advice would you have for them well i know when you're young and you have a family and lots of obligation it is extremely difficult i don't make light of that my son is just just turned 40 and he has three little ones Mm -hmm. but he carves out time somehow um 
even if he has to get up at 4.30 in the morning to go mm-hmm. run. He carves out a little bit of time. Uh, if his wife ever complains, he says to her, would you rather be, uh, be hanging out at bars? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm not preaching, and I, I sympathize with you when you have lots of obligations and a full-time job and a family and all those things going on. Yeah. But you just have to set aside a little bit of time to take care of yourself. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you won't be around for your family very long. And yep. And I think if they know you're doing it for them, they'll appreciate it and be supportive. Uh, so it, uh, I, I understand the challenge completely. Mm-hmm. Um, my, my, my son's been known to jog in the middle of the night <laughs> before dawn all these times. Yeah. Of course, he's a marathoner. So oh. He lives in a ca- different category. He's got to be committed. Yeah, right. And he works out. He lifts weights and everything. Uh-huh. So it can be done. Yeah. It just takes a little bit of discipline. Yeah. First, make it important. Mm-hmm. Secondly, be determined that you're going to do this. And then, considering your family's needs and their schedules, carve out a little time for yourself. You have mm-hmm. to do that. Otherwise, family life will devour everything. And, and yeah. that's important, too. Mm-hmm. But you got to take care of yourself also or you won't be around for long for your family. So true. Yeah, you're doing it for them. Yep. Yeah. If I could put in my two cents, you know, I'm I'm currently in my 30s right now, and I've got three small children, and you know, do of course working, and my wife's working, and we're 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 in the same boat. So I'm like your son. I'm I'm the the guy waking up, showing up at the gym at 4 a.m. 4:30 <laughs> in the morning yeah. to try to get 40 minutes of of uh, weightlifting in. And on Monday, I, I went for a run in the dark at at about 4:30 a.m. as well. Um, but Did you have I, a flashlight? I, I, my in certain spots where the street lights weren't very good. Yes, I, I had my phone, so I flip on the, the light oh, yeah, on my okay. phone. Yeah, uh, I'm on a familiar path though, so I, I kind of right. know what, what to expect. Right. Um, but you know, uh, just a concern that might come up for for listeners out there um, that my wife deals with, because um, you know I get home from my run and she says, "Well, I'm glad you ran. I wish I could do that, but I'm a lady, <laughs> and running at five o'clock in the morning." Doesn't sound very appealing to me because <laughs> yeah. you never know. You know the, the safety of all that stuff is is questionable for for a woman, um, and um, so I, I completely get that. And and um, you know what she's uh, I done. I understand is, her frustration. The good yep. news for my son is that his wife manages some city gyms, so she's in the gym all day long. Yeah, and she gets her workouts in while she's at work. Oh, that's fantastic. And teaching aerobic classes and all those things. Yeah. You know? So so they don't they don't have much tension when it comes to that. But I can mm. understand the wife's frustration. And, oh, yeah. Uh, and she manages, though. We, you know, we make it a point to get the kids to exercise as well. We, we bought a jogger, stroller, and so, yeah, you know, on, on the absolutely. weekends, we'll all go run together. Start them off young. And jug. Yeah, we'll, we'll go to the park, have the kids play in the park yeah. while we take turns running around. So we make And there's nothing wrong with a nice, good, steady walk. Yep. You don't have to be running all the time, and, you're, and your family can all walk with you. Very true. Yeah, just tell them, keep up the pace a little bit, mm. and they need the exercise also. Yep. And yeah. one more piece there that I think listeners will appreciate is is um, the idea of, of life ebbs and flows, but staying in your zone. So, for instance, the holidays might come around, you know, the, the, the December holidays, everybody's on break. For me, my kids were off during that time. And so schedules change. I was comfortable with saying, you know what, I've worked out well enough. I can take a couple weeks off, maybe get some workouts in here and there with the kids. But as soon as life gets back to normal, the holidays are over, I'm back on my schedule. Yeah. And, and, and and that's okay. I have to well, be there's okay no, there's nothing wrong with taking a break. Yeah. 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 So taking breaks, I yeah. think, is okay. Don't, don't make it a permanent break. Right. That's <laughs> that's the key, getting disciplined right. enough to come right. back onto the, the normal uh, healthy schedule. Right. Yeah. So we got one more question here before we're out of time. So now we talked about people in their 30s, 40s, and 50s. What health advice do you have for somebody in their 60s, 70s, 80s, and beyond? Uh, or somebody who's about to retire, or maybe has already retired, and, and they, they're looking to stay healthy. What, what advice do you have for them? Well, I, I, of course, it depends what their lifestyle has been like. Mm-hmm. Many people at that age are very sedentary. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's like, Use it or lose it. If you just sit down once you're retired or in your old age, because you're tired a lot, uh, it gets worse. Yeah. You have to force yourself to get out of the easy chair and out from in front of the TV set. 
And uh, because you're following the line of least resistance, just to plop down in a chair, have lots of snacks and watch TV. If you do that every day, you're not going to last long. Yeah. You know, so uh, staying active is, is really important. I, someone can't start off running and that kind of thing, but you can take walks. And I would say also have interests in addition to the physical and the dietary considerations Mm-hmm. And we talked about attitude, but also have some interests. Mm-hmm. Um, I I read every day. I of course I'm an English professor, so I love mm-hmm. writing, and I just finished my third novel. Uh, but go to art galleries, go to concerts, uh, find a really interesting hobby, something that you're good at. All of us have a special talent, mm-hmm. and many times we follow our economic needs and go into jobs and whatever because we have to. But at some point you have to ask yourself, what do I really enjoy doing? Mm -hmm. And what am I kind of good at, got a knack for? And, you know, people's hobbies often bring them a lot of satisfaction. Mm -hmm. And so uh, having interests and getting out of the house, going to movies, plays, concerts, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But but having interests is important for people. Many I've seen people who have the attitude, oh, I'm this age and I'm no damn good anymore and I'm worthless. And, and they just mm. make it worse for themselves by just kind of resigning yeah. and not having a positive attitude. I sound like Norman Vincent Peale, but, <laughs> but as we said before, the relationship between the mind and the body is a powerful one. Yep. The mind can affect incredibly powerfully uh, the body mm-hmm. and so having interest having a good attitude and having some activity it doesn't mm-hmm. have to be running you know uh, but that's what I would say to people who and you have to anything you start off this new you have to start off very slowly yep. but it should be something you look forward to every day mm-hmm. uh, when you're getting out of bed in the morning what is it in your day that you're really looking forward to mm-hmm. and I've Known people who just said, I'm not looking forward to anything, and oh, I don't care if I die now or not. And I'm like, hey, yeah. man, there's a lot to be lived yet. And yep. so just enjoy the sunshine and the rain and everything, you know, just in, enjoy life. Mm-hmm. Um, that would be my advice. Yep. Not that I'm a counselor or anything, <laughs> but just speaking from my own experience. I love it. I love it. I, you know, here throughout the the past year, even we've had uh, clients that are older, and um, we've seen them lose a spouse, mm-hmm. um, lose relatives. That's devastating. And, yep. And yeah. and um, you know, talking with them through that and being able to see how how they cope with it, and then <clears throat> realize their purpose in life beyond where they're at, yeah. beyond losing a spouse. Yeah. Has been amazing, and and for me personally, as a as a youngster relative to you know somebody at that age, I, I look at you and how I learn a lot from you, and I, I I see it as I have so much to learn from all all these people that are older than me, and um, so I need them in my life, and I think it's important for somebody who's you know, getting older in their years to realize how they can contribute to the generations that are that Go to are senior citizen up. city centers. Meet somebody new. Yeah. <laughs> you you so you your mate. Don't <laughs> give up. Um, so I would say that, um, where was I going with this? <laughs> oh, I told you the story before. Yeah. My, my mother had a sister, my aunt Ruby, and she was married to my father's cousin, uncle Brady. And they worked very hard all their lives. They made a decent amount of money, had real estate and holdings. And and so Mm. they were comfortable. But when they retired, they stayed in bed all day. They ate in bed. They read the newspaper in bed. They watched TV in bed. And I'm telling you, within a year's time, they had totally deteriorated. Both of them became very senile and demented. Wow. Because they just weren't using their body and their mind anymore. Yeah. And I just watched it. I was flabbergasted to see how quickly they deteriorated yeah. from just doing nothing. So you don't want to stay in bed all day. Right. You know, just have activities and that kind of thing. So, yeah. Great advice. This has been a wonderful uh, bit of advice. My pleasure. I'm it's so wonderful grateful. talking to you, David. 
I'm super yeah. grateful. I think our, our listeners are going, are going to benefit a lot from this. Thank you so much, Tony. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Well, um, guys, uh, for those of you listening, if you want to hear more podcasts, uh, you can visit the website, stayhealthyelpaso.com. Please subscribe to our podcast on the platform that you're listening on, whether it's Apple or, or Google or Android. Um, any of the, we're on all the platforms um, just so that you can get updates about uh, future podcasts coming out. And um, I hope that you are staying healthy out there, El Paso. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for listening to the Stay Healthy El Paso podcast, brought to you by El Paso Manual Physical Therapy, where we help El Pasoans get away from taking pain medications, avoid getting injections, avoid surgery, and keeping up an active lifestyle. If you'd like to learn more about what El Paso Manual Physical Therapy can do for you, call 915-503-1314 or visit our website at epmanualphysicaltherapy.com. Mention this podcast for a free discovery visit valued at $100. If you enjoyed what you've heard, please be sure to leave a review on iTunes and follow the show on your favorite listening platform so you won't miss an upcoming episode. Tune in next time to get the best health tips from experts in the El Paso area.